famous American landscape designer, Frederick Law Olmsted, is often described as the father of landscape architecture. But this is wrong. He was the father of the landscape profession, but he was born about 30,000 years too late, by Jellicoe's reckoning, to be the father of the art of designing landscapes for human use and enjoyment. Jellicoe begins his history of landscape art with the Paleolithic cave paintings of Lascaux in southern France, begun 30,000 years ago. When a student in 1969, I was taught that Olmsted had also invented the English term landscape architect. This too is wrong. It was introduced by Gilbert Lang Meeson about 30 years before Olmsted began using it. Meeson was born in the Orkney Islands and used the term in the title of a book about the landscape architecture of the great painters of Italy. Meeson's interest was in the aesthetic relationship between buildings and their contexts. There's also a possibility that Olmsted got the title landscape architect from Jean-Marie Morel's use of architect paysagiste, but I'm doubtful about this. My view is that the term landscape architect probably reached Olmsted from Meeson via John Claudius Loudon, Andrew Jackson Downing and Calvert Vaux. Vaux, who persuaded Olmsted to use the term landscape architect, was brought to America by Downing to help with the design of villas and gardens. Downing was a great admirer of Loudon and must have known the principles for designing villas in book three of Loudon's Encyclopedia of Cottage, Farm and Villa Architecture. Loudon wrote that, the principal defect of English villas is in the want of a sufficient union between the house and the grounds, or, in other words, of cooperation between the architect and the landscape gardener in fixing on situations and in laying them out. Our parks may be beautiful, Lang Meeson observed are mansions faultless in design. But nothing is more rare than to see the two properly connected. Two classes of circumstances need to be taken into consideration. The permanent considerations include climate, elevation, surface, aspect, soil, water, and the sea. The temporary considerations are chiefly its locality, present state, prospective improvement, and the personal peculiarities of the intended possessor. As set out in another video, Loudon also worked on urban planning. So, if Meeson had not left for Italy, and if Loudon had not devoted himself to the Arboretum Britannicum, which ruined him financially, this text could have grown into the Meeson-Loudon Principles of Landscape Architecture, and I wish they had. <laughs>